Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about mitochondrial function. I will cover this topic under these headings: mitochondrial physiology, mitochondrial pathophysiology, the monitoring modalities which can assess mitochondrial function. We know that apart from erythrocytes, all other cells contain mitochondria. Mitochondria is associated with ATP production, maintains the cell housekeeping, and also other functions like calcium regulation, hormone production, and apoptotic death. Mitochondria are generally of a size one to three microns in diameter. Its number are more in a heavily metabolic cell like hepatocytes and cardiomyocytes. It possesses thirty-seven genes. Uh, for producing RNA and protein subunits, it consists of uh, outer membrane, uh, inner membrane, which are separated by the intermembrane space that endorses the crysta and the matrix. Matrix contains ribosome and enzymes of the Krebs cycle. So the outer membrane is protein lipid structure, and it contains a specialized transporter. Which transfer the ADP into and ATP out of the organelle. The inner membrane contains five protein complexes, which make up the electron transport chain. So these are the complexes. So when uh, so like to summarize this uh, the structure. So the Krebs cycle is refueled by acetyl CoA and fatty acid oxidation. Krebs cycle donate the electrons to the electron transport chain. Molecular oxygen is the final electron acceptor at the complex four. The electrochemical gradient generate here it phosphorylate ADP into ATP. ATP is generally used for cellular metabolism and also for generation of the reactive oxygen species. the level of reactive oxygen species increase in disease conditions for example it increases during sepsis aerobic respiration provides the bulk of the atp and smaller amount of atp is generated anaerobically now coming to mitochondrial dysfunction in disease states so first we have to know the difference between hypoxia and dysoxia Hypoxia means imbalance between oxygen supply and the cellular demand. So when there is decreased in cardiac output, it leads to circulatory hypoxia, decrease in hemoglobin, anemic hypoxia, and decrease in oxygen, known as hypoxic hypoxia. But dysoxia is a state where oxygen is available to the cell in sufficient amount, but the mitochondria are unable to utilize it. So there are many drugs. poisons and other conditions where this mitochondrial dysfunction is seen so for drugs like metformin it inhibits the complex 1 of etc that is the electron transport chain dinitrophenol it increases uncoupling of the etc antibiotics like the bactericidal antibiotic it affect the membrane potential generation and bacteriostatic antibiotics they affect the formation of new mitochondria which is known as biogenesis Thiamine deficiency, as we know, thiamine is a cofactor of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, hence it affects the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Nitric oxide, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen sulfide they affect the complex four and damage the ATC. Other conditions, the most important is the sepsis. It decreases the transcription of genes encoding the mitochondrial proteins. And hormonal imbalances uh, like the CQ thyroid syndrome, which is uh, uh seen in critically ill patients it depresses the metabolism and depresses the mitochondrial activity now coming to the mitochondrial monitoring modalities so there are various monitoring modalities uh, for example lactate lactate pyruvate ratio arterial ketone body ratio oxygen consumption microvascular oxyhemoglobin saturation and etc so we'll be discussing one by one first one is the lactate and lactate pyruvate ratio so lactate is a by product of glycolysis glucose is metabolized to pyruvate which then taken up into the mitochondria 
and converted to acetyl CoA by the pyruvate dehydrogenase. The remaining pyruvate they goes into equilibrium with the lactate by lactate dehydrogenase. So lactate produced in excess when there is uh, accelerated glycolysis or there is a downstream block in the Krebs or the electron transport chain or when problem lies with lactate utilization for example liver failure. Accelerated glycolysis can be either seen either with anaerobic glycolysis or aerobic glycolysis. So in anaerobic glycolysis it occurs as a part of compensatory response to the cellular oxygen limitation to increase the ATP production. And aerobic glycolysis, uh, here it, uh, it is due to uh, excess catecholamine which is an adaptive response to the stress. Downstream block of the Krebs and ETC we already discussed in the previous slide. So from this equation, we can very well derive that the lactate to pyruvate ratio is equivalent to the NADH to NAD ratio. So the lactate to pyruvate ratio can be used as a surrogate measure of the cytosolic oxidoreduction state. So the conditions where there occur increased lactate of more than 2 with increase in the lactate to pyruvate ratio of more than 25 are the disorders of the electron transport chain or the Krebs cycle. And the conditions where only lactate is increased but this ratio remain less than 25. It means there is a defect in the pyruvate metabolism only. It is measured by microdialysis using the fine catheters implanted into tissue beds uh, like the brain, subcutaneous tissue, muscle, kidney etc. And this measurement can be done at bedside and also in the laboratory. Next one is the arterial ketone body ratio, acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate. They, these ketone bodies are exclusively produced by liver and released into the circulation for utilization by oxidation by organs like brain, kidney and muscle. The ratio of arterial blood acetoacetate to beta hydroxybutyrate reflect the hepatic mitochondrial redox potential. So when the ratio is decreased, it correlates with increased liver dysfunction. Normally in a healthy patient, the ratio is more than 1 and when it is less than 1, means uh, in liver disease it is less than 1. Third one is the oxygen consumption. Oxygen is predominantly used by mitochondria. The main utilization of oxygen is ATP production by complex 4 of ETC. It also required to produce reactive oxygen species. So oxygen consumption can be calculated either as whole body oxygen consumption or at tissue level. So whole body oxygen consumption calculation. So it used a variance of FIC principle where the total uptake is calculated by multiplying cardiac output to the arteriovenous difference of the oxygen. But this approach generally excludes the oxygen consumed within the lung. Normally the oxygen delivery is 1000 ml per minute and consumption is around 250 ml per minute. So decreased oxygen consumption is seen in two conditions. One, when there is inadequate supply of oxygen. Second one, when there is decreased utilization. So inadequate supply of oxygen means when there is decrease in cardiac output, decrease in hemoglobin or oxygen saturation. And decrease utilization means when there is mitochondrial dysfunction or toxicity. So how to differentiate between these two conditions? By using the mixed venous oxygen supply. So in case of inadequate supply of oxygen, the mixed venous oxygen saturation is low and in case of mitochondrial dysfunction, mixed venous oxygen saturation is high. The second approach again using the FIC principle is indirect calor calorimetry. So where the oxygen consumption is the difference of the inspired gas volume to fractional oxygen minus the expired gas volume into fractional oxygen. 
this can be used both for spontaneously breathing patient and patients on mechanical ventilation a correction uh, for temperature humidification and ventilatory flow should be taken into account so oxygen consumption at organ level this measures the oxygen blood flow and oxygen content within the arterial supply and the venous drainage of that organ so how to measure the tissue where we want to measure the oxygen consumption is to be placed into a fluid inside a closed chamber of the known volume with an integral oxygen sensor then the rate of fall of the oxygen tension within the chamber it enables the calculation of oxygen consumption one advantage of this technique is that tissue can be exposed to different substrates activator inhibitor of the electron transport chain next is the microvascular oxyhemoglobin saturation this technique utilizes near infrared uh, spectroscopy to provide a continuous non invasive monitoring it is based on the principle it utilizes three concept one is the relative transparency of the tissue to light in the near infrared range oxygenation dependent light absorbing characteristic of the hemoglobin and third one is the beer lambert law it is a uh, very similar to a pulse oximetry in many ways but the major difference is that pulse oximetry monitors the oxyhemoglobin within the arterial blood but this measures the change in oxy and deoxyhemoglobin in microvasculature like arterioles capillaries and the venules so the greater utility of this technique is from the dynamic assessment involving the limb vascular occlusion so where the rate of fall in oxygen saturation on arterial occlusion signifies the local oxygen consumption and uh, whereas the rate of recovery signal on release of the occlusion indicates the microvascular regulation a significant reduction in oxygen consumption with accompanying microvascular dysregulation is generally found in septic shock patient now coming to tissue oxygen tension this is a local balance between oxygen supply and utilization decreased tissue oxygen tension it's seen in conditions where oxygen delivery cannot meet the local metabolic needs that is in case of hypoxia increased tissue oxygen oxygen tension it's seen either due to excessive oxygen delivery or due to metabolic need when the metabolic need is suppressed for example hypothermia or during sedation or when there is mitochondrial utilization of the oxygen is impaired like in case of a resuscitated sepsis patient it has been found that fall in the tissue oxygen tension is a more sensitive marker than the global markers the monitoring is done in real time by implanting oxygen sensors into tissue mitochondrial redox state this is based on the assumption that total pool of reduced nadas to oxidized nad and oxidized to reduce cytochrome oxidase remains the same and as the redox state primarily depends uh, upon the availability of mitochondrial oxygen its monitoring can be directly responsive to the state of hypoxia this uh, modality use the phenomenon of autofluorescence so where the nadh and the oxidized cytochrome oxidase fluoresce when excited by the ultraviolet illumination but the oxidized nad and reduced cytochrome oxidase are not the last modality is the mitochondrial oxygen tension so this is a technique uh, for measuring the oxygen mitochondrial oxygen tension in the epidermal skin layer this technique uh, is developed by mick and colleague this utilizes the endogenous protoporphyrin 9 which only located within the mitochondria as an intra mitochondrial oxygen sensitive dye so the technique involves first topical application uh, of its precursor that is 5 amino levolinic acid is done after that application of a green laser flashlight 
is to be done. Calculation of mitochondrial uh, oxygen tension is uh, by using an equation that is known as the Stern-Volmer equation. And here the signal obtained represent an index of mitochondrial oxygen tension as it can be ablated by topical administration of cyanide which is an inhibitor of the electron transport chain. Its uh, absolute value is not well defined but it offers a means of monitoring the change over a time period. And another use is to perform the dynamic challenge by occluding the local blood flow and measuring the oxygen disappearance rate which directly related to the mitochondrial oxygen consumption. So to summarize, production of sufficient energy substrate or the ATP by mitochondria is an integral to the adequate functioning of virtually all cell types within the body. Monitoring of mitochondrial functionality and tissue oxygenation provides important windows to determine the adequacy of the organ perfusion in critically ill patients. Several techniques either direct measure or surrogates are available to perform this at bedside.